I've got a dirty secret to share with all of you. I like to be served. I like it when people wait on me. Like, I really enjoy, like, when my family will, like, make me breakfast in bed or something like that. You know, I, I, I appreciate that the hospitality people up front understand that, like, I like to connect with the people here, and so they'll get a coffee ready for me the way I like it, and they'll hand it to me. I mean, I love that kind of stuff. And, and I, I feel like I've been keeping it a secret for way too long, and I feel like I need just to let you know that this is something I really enjoy. And, and, and I have a sneaking suspicion I'm not the only one in the room. Is there anyone else you want to admit I, you enjoy being served? All right, those of you who didn't raise your hand, maybe you need somebody to come and raise your hand for you. You need that much service. I, don't, I, I, I think this is something that all of us get, right? That, that this is just something all of us enjoy. I want you to pause for a moment and think about who in your life, either current or past, exemplifies service to you. Who, who do you know that when, when you think of servant, this person's name pops up? Oh, wow, grandma, there you go. My grandma was a great servant, so I, I, can, I can imagine, yeah. We, we, we've all hopefully got those people, right? Like I, I can think through parents and grandparents and relatives. I can think through people that I've worked with, worked alongside. I've had the privilege of working with some amazing pastors through my years. Uh, we actually just uh, found out that one of the pastors that was instrumental in our lives just passed away. Um, he's the one that prayed for my wife when we were told we would never have kids. And he prayed within a little bit of us finding out about it. He had no knowledge. And shortly after that, Silas came along. So it's like, we, we've had some amazing servants. One, one of the ones that really kind of stands out to me, though, is an interesting one. It's a man by the name of Dan Cathy. If you're not familiar with Chick-fil-A, you may not know the name, but Truett Cathy is the man who founded Chick-fil-A, and his son is now the current CEO. While I was living in Atlanta, I worked for the company, and I got several opportunities to meet Dan up close and personal. And the thing that always blew me away is this guy is the most important person, you know, from an organizational chart standpoint in that company. And yet, he was always serving. He was, anytime I went and saw him, he was always doing something to serve the people in the room. I, I was a low-level manager, and there was a, a couple hundred of us that came in for training. He gave each and every one of us his personal cell phone, and he said, if you ever need anything, if you're ever running into problems at the store, your store, please come contact me. Let me know. You know, don't go above your manager, but like, you know, like if you need to go to them first, but if there's something that you guys can't handle, talk with me. I went to a banquet where he was the guest of honor. And once, I, I actually was the guy who got to serve him his meal. And then as soon as I did, he got up and he got in line with the rest of us and didn't sit down to eat until everybody in the room was served. I mean, it, just, it blew me away. But when, when you realize their corporate value is that they would serve people in a way that would reflect the heart and generosity of Jesus Christ, it kind of sort of makes sense. They were completely embodying, the entire Truett Cathy family was embodying this principle. And so today we are going to continue. I wish I could give you Chick-fil-A's recipe for their chicken sandwiches because it's amazing, but I don't even know. No employee knows that. But I can give you a recipe that we've been looking at for the last few weeks, a recipe for hope. And, and, and I believe if you put these ingredients in and you stir them up and you allow these things in your life, you're going to see more hope in you and you're going to be a better dispenser of hope to the people around you. 
And so, uh, speaking of hope, I hope you had a chance to fill out your digital connect card or, or filled out one of those things. For those of you online who are joining us right now um, and you're on the Facebook feed, you may not have already heard, it would be a good time to fill out your digital connect card so you can text RIVER to 715-953-4060. Um, in case you're in the room and you missed the offering going by, you can do it that way as well. But it's important that we... We give hope. And if you didn't give us your email address, please do that because what we're going to send you a quick recipe for, for how you can keep doing this today, how you can imply in, apply the things you're learning right now. So today we're going to talk about serving up hope because, as I mentioned, we have a simple recipe that we believe here, that if you just do this, you're going to have more hope. We do it as a church because we believe this is how we produce hope for our community. And it's just simply this. You follow Christ, you serve others, you reach the world. I mean, simple to say, simple to memorize, may not be as simple to live out, but, but I think if we learn to do it together, we have the opportunity to see hope start here in this room and then transfer to the world around us. And so we are going to look at a passage it's kind of an interesting passage this morning. It's the story that Jesus is telling about the end of times and what it's going to be like on the day of judgment. Now, obviously this is a, kind of one of those things that you kind of hope you wish you had a key to, right? Like you knew what it was going to be like when you stood before God. Well, Jesus kind of gives us a clue on what it means to be someone who serves up hope and, and what it means to stand before him with some sense of you've got this thing right. So I want to I read Matthew 25 and I'm going to look at verses 31 through 40. Matthew 25 verses 31 through 40 and I'll be reading today out of the New Living Translation. And I'd invite you to stand for the reading of God's word if you're able to, if you can, if you're watching online or you're driving, please stay seated. But um, but for those of you here in this room, I think it's always a good idea to honor God's word. So let, let's read Matthew 25, verses 31 through 40. And again, I'm reading this out of the New Living. This is how it reads. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence. And he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you would illuminate your word. That as we spend a few moments here learning the power of serving other people, that we would see how much potential you've placed in each one of us. I pray that you would be glorified through these next few moments, that together we would be better equipped to serve a world who needs more hope. Thank you for the privilege of allowing us to gather here today as we pray these things in your name. Amen. Well, before you see it, why don't you wave to a person or two. Let them know you're excited to be worshiping with them today. If you're online, 
throw us an emoji or let us know where you're at. Well, there, there's a few things that I want to look at here. First of all, I want to point out one thing that serving doesn't do. And then I want to point to two things that it does. I think it's very important when we talk about serving and, and when we look at church because I think there can be a lot of confusion around this. But when it, when it comes to serving, I want you to understand that serving doesn't save you. Like when we look at this, it, it almost feels like the people got saved because they were serving. But that would be untrue to the rest of the gospel. I mean, there, there's the one part in the story where you hear Jesus as the king talking to the people who are being brought into eternal life. He says, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. And he's saying that specifically to the people who had been serving. But I think what we need to recognize is that when we take the fullness of the Bible, and not just this one passage, that all of the Bible points to the idea that while serving is good, it doesn't save you. It's not what gets you into heaven. A great verse that I like to share when I'm trying to share the gospel with people is Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Because it helps people, especially people who grew up going to church or grew up around religious families, it helps them understand you can't earn your salvation. Paul tells the Ephesians, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done so that none of us can boast about it. So we're going to spend a lot of time in the next few minutes talking about why serving is so important, but I need you to see this. It doesn't save you. You don't get into heaven because of your good works. And if you're someone here, you're not a follower of Christ, I, I want to clear that out of the way. You don't get into heaven by being a good person. You get into heaven by believing that Jesus Christ died for you. You get into heaven by accepting the gift that he has already prepared. And so if you haven't made that decision, in just a few moments, I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond to this truth, to believe in Jesus Christ and to make a confession to say, I want to follow him. But for the rest of us, we need to make sure we have this drilled down. That serving doesn't save us. It's interesting, if you keep following the story that we read already, it doesn't seem like they knew they were doing this to try to earn some kind of merit from God. As a matter of fact, they were confused. In verse 37, it says, Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? In other words, they were almost saying, wait, we, we were just doing life. We, we were just trying to express our gratitude for what you've given us. When did we ever do this for you? And so it kind of points to the fact that they weren't doing it to try to be saved. They were doing it out of something that was already inside of them. Which brings me to the one thing that I think we need to understand or one of the things I think we need to understand about serving is serving shows salvation. That, that we don't serve to become saved, we serve because we are saved. That, that there's something that happens that when you make that decision to follow Christ, you want to give out. You want to let other people know. You want to be someone who reflects the image of Jesus Christ. And Jesus was a servant. I mean, there, there's a very personal aspect to this, that coming to church is great, and being a part of a church that feeds people and takes care of people and, and sends missionaries around the world is great. And I'm so glad that you've chosen to be in, in a church like that today. But I, I need you to see that it's more than that, that you have to be the one that does it. That you need to be the one that expresses your salvation through serving. In verse 35, he says, For I was hungry, and you fed me. 
I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. Not, I was a stranger and your church invited me into it. Or I was a stranger and your church did a feeding program. So thank you for giving them money for doing that. I mean, I, I think there's going to be some blessing for, for giving monetarily so that other people can do the work in the ministry. But there's something different that comes when we actually show our salvation by serving. When we choose to say, I'm going to use what I've been given, not just my finances, but I'm going to give of my time, I'm going to give of my talent so that other people can see the goodness of God. You know, and it's interesting because the opposite is true too. That when, when we choose to be selfish, when we choose to say, no, this whole experience, this is about serving me. We, we put ourselves at a dangerous place that we, we have to really question how close to the gospel are we? I mean, I, there, I was at this conference once and this professor got up and he was talking about the gospel. And he, he basically laid out the Great Commission, which we talked about a couple weeks ago, go into all the world. And he, he just asked the question, if you're not excited about the Great Commission, how saved are you? Like, if this is not something that motivates you, and if we kept reading, Jesus says to the people who were not living out the, the, a servant lifestyle, he says to this in verses uh, 36, th- sorry, 45 and 46. He says, and he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you refuse to help me. And they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. Again, I don't think they were saved by doing the good works, but I think the good works made it evident. It made it clear. You know, and so I don't, I don't say this to be a downer, but I think we need to be making sure that we are checking our hearts and saying, what am I, what, what's keeping me from serving God more? This doesn't mean every time someone asks you to serve, you need to do it 100%. Like, there's a lot of great people. There's a lot of great ministries here. You might get a couple of taps on the shoulder saying, hey, I would love you to serve in this part of our church. This is not saying you have to say yes to every one of those. Although you you might want to consider saying yes to at least one. That that you would be someone who says, I want to allow God to use me and my gifts and my talents because I want to show the people around me how much I love Jesus. And understanding, like, not every person who serves is going to serve in their sweet spot. We, we hope that you would serve in your sweet spot, but we, we have a lot of things that need to get done in the church, and maybe you're going to step out and do something that's maybe not in your comfort zone, but it, it, it's at least going to grow you and stretch you. I mean, if you don't like kids, please don't serve in the nursery. You know, I mean, that, that, that should just be a given, but, but I'll, I'll just do this. I want everyone just to take a moment and see how well you smile. Just everyone smile. Okay, I see some great smiles over here. Uh, no, no, that one's a good one too. All right, yeah, some great smiles over here. Wonderful. See, you all qualify to be greeters. <laughs> if you can smile, you can stand out there. And I mean, I, I just got to say this. Sutliffs, you guys are doing an amazing job with your kids. The, if you don't know, these guys are only here this Sunday. They just came here to help us with worship. But anywhere I've gone in this church where one of their kids has been, they're like, can I help you? Can I help you? Do you want me to do that? It, it, it was just like, you know, and it's, it's because, it's, I, I believe it's because it's been modeled. You know, and because, and like I said, it's not the natural inclination. All of our natural inclinations are, I want to be served. But the thing is, when you start doing this enough, you start to realize how powerful it is to serve other people, which brings me to my last thought. And that's simply this, that serving saves others. You don't know who you are impacting when you serve. You have no idea the potential of little acts of kindness and what it can do for someone's eternal salvation. I mean, it's, it's obvious 
that the people that Jesus is commending in this parable he's telling had no clue the full extent of what they were doing. In verse 40, you know, he, he lays it out to them and he says, I tell you the truth, when you do, did this to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. I need you to get this truth. You can't serve God without serving other people. You know, we talk about the fact that I want to serve Jesus. I want to be a servant of God. Well, you can't do that without serving other people. And Jesus points out that when you do, you're actually serving me. Well, let me get back to the selfish part of me. I I, I want there to be something good from me serving. Well, I need you to see that I'm not asking you to do this just because we need some more people working in the nursery, but we do need some more people working in the nursery. Just, I'll throw that out there. I'm not saying this because we need more greeters, though we need more greeters. I'm not saying this because we need more people helping out with, with vacuuming around the church or different things like that. We, we need all of those things. But I don't want something out of you as much as I want something for you. You see, the truth is, even secular science recognizes that there are powerful personal impacts to being a servant. I, I found this, this survey, I mean, I found hundreds of them actually, like different lists about what happens to you when you serve. And this one was really succinct, so I thought I'd share it really quick. This is, you know, the benefits of volunteering. And this is from a secular organization. And so it says, here, here are some of the benefits of volunteering. It increases socialization. It improves your self-esteem. It reduces your risk of dementia. It improves physical health and longevity. It provides a sense of purpose and direction. It increases happiness. It helps to counter the effects of stress, anger, anxiety, and depression. Any of you any deal with any of that ever? Okay, so the, serving reduces the effects of that. It increases self-confidence. It advances your career. And college students, listen up. It improves school and college experience. I didn't make this up. These are secular people saying, this is what serving does for you. And, you know, I read an article about four in Forbes about this and it says, unless you're giving back, it's hard to stay on your growth track. Unless you're giving back, it's hard for you to continue growing as an individual. And so, you've got to look for opportunities to give back. And just to show you that this not just affects you, it doesn't just affect Jesus. It affects other people. Paul, in talking to the Corinthians, he was trying to convince that church there that you've got to not try to get your own way out of everything. You've got to look for ways to serve people who are different from you. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and verse 19, Paul says, Even though I am a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. So what's he saying there? He's saying he purposely has taken the role of the servant, even though it's not required, even though he's not uh, being at a job or being a master by anyone that that he's just saying, I'm choosing to be a servant to everyone because by doing that, people are going to come to Christ. Serving shows other people what salvation is all about. One of my favorite verses, I've said it so many times. Jesus says that the world will know that you are my followers by the kind of car you drive. Oh, wait, no, I got I, I, I've, I've done this so many times, I get it mixed up. God, <laughs> people will know that you are my followers by the type of church you attend. No, that, that was wrong. Oh, wait, I think I got it this time. People will know that you are my followers by the love you have for each other. I could go for that too. Thank you, Douglas. That, 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 this is... This is what we are created for. You know, and specifically, Jesus is saying the love we have for the other people in this room. The love we have for each other should be a testimony to the world outside. You know, I, 
People all the time, when we're doing our Pizza Thursdays, people all the time will stop us and say, why are you doing this? And I just say, because I like to surprise people with free things. I I like to serve people and let them know the gospel comes with free things. That's why last week we gave away sliders and t-shirts, and if you weren't here, you missed it. I'm so sorry. You know, we, we don't have any more sliders today, but I think we got some delicious cookies waiting for us, or, or, or something good is back there, I guarantee it. But, but, he, but here's the thing. We do it because we want people to recognize that salvation, the church, it, it comes with all sorts of amazing good things, and it's even better when you choose to be a part of the process, when you choose to say, I'm going to serve. And so, I know if you've been coming for the last few weeks, we keep handing you new cards and different cards and everything because this is our, our vision month every September. And so we want to make sure people understand why we exist. We exist to follow Christ, to serve others, and to reach the world. And so I want to invite you that if you want to get the most out of your experience here at this church, I want you to dive in. And so all of you should have gotten one of these. If you didn't, we'll make sure you get one on the way out. Talk to somebody up front. We'll make sure you get one of these. You can also, if you didn't get one of these, or if you're watching us online, you can text the word SERVE to 715-953-4060 or just go to riveroflife.co forward slash SERVE and you'll get to a little thing that will bring you to an online form just like this. But I would love for you to get involved. Again, not just because we need volunteers, but because you need to volunteer. You need an opportunity to express the gifts and the talents God's put in you. You need to put yourself in a place that will stretch you sometimes. You need to be around other believers who are moving forward in the same direction. So you follow Christ and you serve others. And and it's just this powerful dynamic when we step in like that and we say, I'm willing to give so that more people can impact, be impacted by the gospel. And so I really want to encourage you, fill this out. You can leave it up here on stage. You can bring it up uh, to the information center, to the welcome center, um, and, and give it to one of the people out there. And so and here's the other thing. If you came or you didn't come last week and you missed out on the T-shirt, if you bring this up to the front, Uh, to our Welcome Center, they'll make sure you get a t-shirt. So there you go. All right. So if you're willing to serve, even though you missed free t-shirt Sunday, I'm still going to give you a shirt. And if you are a first-time guest and you filled one of these out, I'm going to give you a t-shirt too. So so there you go. No reason not to get a free t-shirt. Come on out. We love surprising people with free stuff. So there you go. And and so there's no reason. But, But even if you don't get plugged in here, Please, please, please find a church and get plugged in because this is what I believe with all of my heart. Saved people serve people. That's a good recipe for hope. Saved people serve people. I want you to find a way to allow your salvation to shine through your life. So take a moment, fill that out. Be a part of what God's doing here. And then continue to stir up hope. That's what we've been talking about through this series, is that we need to be people who stir up hope. And so I, w- I want to encourage you to do that by doing any one of these four things, but hopefully you can do all four. First of all, read about hope. I, I challenge you, go online, go to your Bible, look up the word serve, and read passages about serving. I, I gave you three that you could start with. One is Jesus saying that I didn't come to serve. But I came, sorry, I didn't come to be served, but I came to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. He understood his service was going to draw people into the kingdom and us lifting up his service is going to do the same. So read about it. Talk about it. Get together with people. Maybe you came with some friends Over lunch, talk about what we we just talked about today. Ask each other hard questions about, man, what are you doing to serve? How how has God been challenging you to be a better servant? 
or come on out on Wednesday nights. We'd love to have you. We, just, we go through the sermon and we go through some of these verses that we didn't touch today and we ask each other these questions. And so if you filled out your communication card, you're actually going to get a list of the questions we're going to ask on Wednesday night. So you can, if you can't be here on Wednesday, you can get together with other people and follow along. And then pray about our hope. Take time and pray about the people who need to hear hope from you. One thing that we are doing as a church is we are partnering with a movement called Change the Map. We believe that the prayers of a righteous person can change much. And especially when we pray together. And I, I've shared every week on this that we, we've kind of heard about people in the Muslim world coming to know Christ in unprecedented numbers. Largely because there's been a prayer movement for decades praying specifically for that group of people. And if you want to pray for that, great, keep doing that. But one thing that we've recognized is there's not a same large-scale prayer movement over the Buddhist nations and over the Buddhist people groups. And so we want to encourage you to be praying for someone in that region or in that, you know, you don't have to, but if you're not going to pray for them, pray for somebody. Pray for, pray for another nation. The United States would be a great one to put on your prayer list. I'm, I'm just... I'm just saying, but be praying for countries around the world that the gospel can continue to penetrate and could continue to change lives. And so what I'd really like you to do is be praying specifically for the Buddhist nations if you can or if you have that heart. And then also be praying for other people that you can impact directly. So you should have gotten a card. I know we ran out, and so if you didn't get one of our cards, I apologize but you should have gotten a card that looks something like this that just says, change the map. And on the back side, there's a place where you can put people you're praying for and nations you're praying for. And so I want to encourage you, fill that out. I just got the most amazing Facebook message this week. We've been doing this for two weeks now. And most of the names are actually up front because I, I took them up front. We pray for, if you bring your cards we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for your card. Um, that's why you got two. Because I want you to fill one out and take it home. And I know it's a corny joke. I say it almost every week, but put it on your fridge or put it in your Bible, whichever one you open most often. And remind yourself to be praying for these people. And then I want you to take your second one, and we've got one of these back on our missions table, we got one of these up here. I want you to just slide it in there, and we want to be praying with you. All of them are up front. There's one up front, because on Wednesday nights, we've been praying for you guys, and we've been praying for the people you're praying for. And so put that in there so we can be praying with you. But many people put Japan. I mean, obviously, we only have a handful of nations we have listed up there, so it seemed obvious that Japan would come up with several times. Well, this week I got an email from an Assemblies of God missionary, and he specifically helps to connect Japanese students in college in Minnesota. He reached out to me, he says, I have 12 Japanese stout students that are looking to plug into a church. Can you help me? <laughs> yes, very much yes. And so we, we haven't continued that conversation yet, but like for two weeks we've been praying for Japan and all of a sudden out of the blue someone says, I've got 12 Japanese students that are trying to connect with the church. Like Come on. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, do they like pizza? We'll find out. You know. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. You don't know. You don't know what your prayers can do. It's one form of serving that you would pray for other people, that you would pray for other nations, that you would believe for movements of people coming to know Jesus Christ. So I just want to encourage you, be praying, pray about this hope, and then come back. Return for hope. Return for more of this and invite a friend. I thank you. I see some people that, have, that did that this week. You invited friends to come with you. Thank you. The only way this movement grows is if we continue to do that. And so, and again, we, we want to continue to partner with you, so if you haven't filled out your Digital Connect card, let us know that, and we can, we can give you the resources you need. 
to continue to stir up hope in you. Why do we do this? Why do we serve? Why do we take time to talk about how important it is to smile at people as they walk in or to help out in the nursery or to help serve pizza? I mean, why, why do we talk about this? Because we have the most amazing example. When we were still enemies with God, he sent his son. He served us. He died the death we should have died. He took our penalty and he served us by giving us eternal life for anyone who would accept that gift. And that's why right now we are going to remember communion. This reminds us of the ultimate act of sacrifice. The ultimate act of a servant. Jesus said that on the night when he was betrayed, he said that we are to take this bread because this bread represents his body broken for us. And he said this cup, it represents the blood that he poured out. So, communion just kind of seems, if, you're, if you haven't really tuned into it, it can seem like communion is just a snack time. I mean, it's a, it's a tiny snack, but like this, this little snack time we have right in the middle of service. But it's so much more than that. Because Jesus said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are remembering me until I come back. And that's why we do this physical act. It's a remembrance. It's a saying, I'm going to remember what you did. But I once heard a pastor challenge his congregation with something different. Think about what this represents. Jesus, a servant pushing himself beyond what was pleasant. I mean, if, if you haven't studied crucifixion, it's awful. The word excruciating actually comes from the Greek word from the cross. It means, excruciating means from the cross. So he said, please take communion. Please do this in remembrance. But what if it's not just that? What if every time you serve, what if every time you allow yourself to be broken for someone else, what if every time you allow your life to be poured out so that other people can hear the gospel, what if that is the same as remembering him? And what if every time we do that, we're proclaiming his death and resurrection? What if every time we stand out there and smile at people and wave, we're really remembering what Christ has done for us? So please, we're going to take communion. Please allow it to be powerful and symbolic for what you've done, but also let it remind you of what you are called to. You are called to be broken. You are called to be poured out because so many more people and I recognize there might be some of you in this room and there might be some of you watching online and you haven't even accepted this hope yet. I, I want to give you an opportunity. As a matter of fact, why don't we all start praying? If you are already a Christ follower, begin to pray for people who are either in this room or who are watching online or may connect with this message later who need to know the hope of Jesus Christ. And if that's you, thank you for sticking with us. Thank you for being a part of this service. I want to give you an opportunity right now to respond to the hope of Jesus Christ. So if that's you, I invite you to pray a simple prayer. If you can feel the Holy Spirit calling to you saying, come, 
Come to the Father. Come to Jesus. I want you to pray something simple like this. You don't have to use my words. You don't even have to say this out loud. But express this to Jesus. Say something like, Dear Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you died for my sins. And I believe that God rose you from the dead. I'm so sorry for the life that I've lived. For pursuing my own selfish ways. Today I turn away from that lifestyle. And I choose to follow you. Holy Spirit, fill me. Help me to follow Jesus every day. God, I thank you for this new life. From this day forward, you have all of me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, if you prayed a prayer like that, please come tell us. If you're online, click on the link so that you can send us that information. But we're going to have some people up front here who would love to pray with you. So we're going to have some of our worship team members or some of our prayer team members going around. As a matter of fact, I invite you to stand as we partake of communion together. And, and I need you to know, we do an open communion here. So that your only prerequisite for joining us with communion is that you've say, said a prayer like that somewhere in the past. You don't have to be a member of our church. You don't have to be a member of the Assemblies of God. You can just be a Christ follower and you can join us. And so I would encourage you, I heard some of you already starting the process. If you, ha if you haven't, go ahead and get the bread out and we're going to partake the bread together and then we're going to partake the cup and we're going to do this in remembrance of what Christ has done and as a call for what he is calling us to do. So let's partake of the bread and also the cup. Jesus, as you were poured out, as you gave yourself as a sacrifice for me, I am so grateful. That is the greatest news that I have ever heard. Help me to reflect it by being a servant too. Help the world see your love through the way I serve other people. Let me serve in such a way that people don't even see me. They see you. That we would be willing to lay aside our selfish desires to be served and that we would choose to serve no matter the cost. That we would be obedient to the Holy Spirit. That our lives could reflect this goodness to more and more people. That the goodness of God would well up in us and be a testimony to the world around us. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for what you do as we pray these things in your name. Amen. 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 Well, hey, we're going to sing one more worship song. If you need to sneak out, we understand that. But please, just take a moment. And if you need prayer, we're going to have some prayer partners up here in the corners. Let somebody pray for you. It doesn't have to be about salvation. It could be about anything. Maybe you just need somebody to pray with you that you would have the courage to serve in a way that you know God's calling you to. But let's all go out of here expecting to see the goodness of God in our lives and through our lives. So I love you guys. I hope to see you next Sunday. Let's worship strong.